showing up today to uh, join me in my madness to uncover all these things. The, the impetus behind this today, searching into what everybody says about the afterlife, came from one day, just a couple of days before Christmas, I happened to be looking at my, my Facebook and there were like two or three posts where people wrote that you know they're they're uh, you know hoping that their things would go good for them and they knew that their father or their mother whoever was up there looking down on them and I got to thinking and I was helped by our president too because according to him there's there's at least one person looking up from down below but you know I I, I thought well if if everybody believes that their loved ones are up there looking down, who's in hell? <laughs> there must be nobody there. So I decided this, and of course this got me going, I decided to do a little research as to what is actually in the Bible. What does it say about the afterlife? I bumped that up against uh, a lot of other cultures historically all through the ages. and. Uh, those that had direct influence on Christianity. So my agenda today, I'll, I'll lay this out nice and clear. My agenda today is to give you some background on the whole concept of an afterlife. Uh, then there'll be a survey of select religions, those that had a lot of influence on Christianity or the Abrahamic religions. And then we'll have an examination, a very specific examination of afterlife for Christian uh, scripture. Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions and whatever. Uh, this is all, all for fun. Um, so some background. It was, it was interesting when I was looking into this. I thought it would be very black and white, very straightforward. And it's not. Um, the background to this is that most metaphysical models in today's societies accept the existence of an, of an immortal entity. So we're going to start, I'm going to use that as a base, I'm going to assume that we all have mortal souls. That's what the, the, all of this is going to be based on. We all have souls, they are all immortal, but what happens to them afterwards, that's where the fun comes in. Now, what one school of thought we're going to look at is the concept of an afterlife, and this is probably going to bleed through, yeah. versus what I call oblivion. So the afterlife um, usually it concerns a reward. It concerns a reward, but you got to be careful with the word. The reward is you're given something. It could be for something you did good or something you did evil. So there's going to be some kind just of... just reward, right? Huh? <laughs> a reward or a just reward. Well, just reward, who knows what that is. When we're human, we don't understand what that means. So we, we kind of like make things up that make sense to us. Uh, and the other thing is oblivion, and oblivion here is not nothing. The, the oblivion compared to the other side that there's an afterlife, this is kind of like instant reincarnation. Some religions out there do not believe in an afterlife, per se. They believe in instant reincarnation. As soon as you die, you come back. You don't spend any time in the holding pen or, or anything like that. Uh, then there's a distinction to be made between reincarnation and no reincarnation. And what that means
what that means is that there's a, in, in re, reincarnation, there's a cyclical process that goes on. Your soul keeps getting reborn until finally your soul melds with whatever the God force is. So you'll be going over and over again, cycles over and over again, trying to get it right. But the, um, the, the, thing, the, the thing that's fascinating about this cycle of reincarnation is eventually you're going to reach a point. Has anybody heard the example of the water drop in, in the ocean? Think of your soul as a drop of water. And when you finally make it to unite with the Godhead, it's like putting that drop of water into the ocean. Where are you? So it, it is like oblivion once you make it that far. So that, that, that's kind of like the interesting thing about that. So you, you can have reincarnation. You can have a, a, a cyclical thing going on versus no reincarnation, which there's two ways. Is uh, no, no reincarnation means that you go to a place post-death where there's a reward for good or evil, or there is a very small, small, small bunch of philosophies, etc., that believes in oblivion, period. The Sadducees, you guys are all familiar with the Sadducees. You had the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and the Essenes, and all that were in uh, Israel uh, during the time of Jesus. They believed in nothing after death. Once you die, it's it. Done. Lights out. You didn't have a soul, etc., etc. So that, that would be on that side. So I, I, I broke it up into these four things, and hope I didn't confuse anybody, but we'll get into it a little bit more now. Uh, a little background, we're going to start with prehistoric man. You're too busy hunting to think about it. <laughs> uh, prehistoric man. We have... That's like the Stone Age. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. This is before they left any any written records. We've identified. We, when I say that, I mean scientists, etc., etc. Um, they've discovered and they've conceded the belief in an afterlife because they found burial pits with funerary objects in there. Uh, that that strongly, strongly uh, suggests a belief in an afterlife. I mean, why would they put? bows and arrows and cups and all this stuff in the grave with the person. You know, most people are, are born oriented, face of the east. So there, there's some kind of stuff back there that suggests that prehistoric man believed in some kind of afterlife. And I think the oldest, um, the oldest burial pits they found are 34,000 years old, according to carbon dating. Uh, there's a place in, in Russia that they found a site which is declared the oldest that there was. Um, there have also been, and the scientists aren't ready to put the full stamp of approval on, there have been sites throughout Europe and Africa where they found tantalizing very little evidence, a little bit, that these were burial sites for people who believed in an afterlife. And these range anywhere between 40 and 130,000 years ago. Who knows? The other thing that's interesting about belief in an afterlife among prehistoric humans is that it applies not only to Homo sapiens, it also applies to Neanderthal man. So Neanderthal man, cousins of ours on the evolutionary scale, you know, seems also to have a belief in the afterlife. What that afterlife is. <clears throat> what happened to all the anthrophos and what happened to all the cave people? All new revelations. Well, you, you know, it's it, it's interesting that you brought it up. There's a a, a place in France uh, that dates back oh to it, it suggests about fifty thousand years ago. There's a cave with a torturous way in to a chamber way in the back. 
where they found bones and artifacts, human bones and artifacts that go back about 50,000 years ago. But they can't declare for sure that they are that old or it's evidence of a mass burial because there's too many things, there's not enough evidence. Um, the, all those bones could have been for, you know, belong to people who took shelter in there because of a storm and maybe it was a flash flood and killed everybody. There, there's not enough evidence for that. There, there's, there's very little evidence for this at all. This is like, scientists are like stretching for this stuff. They're, they're just going by the evidence, the, the evidence that they have. Um, <coughs> how many of you all believe that you got loved ones up there looking down? Sure. Cool. Very good. The first condition we're going to talk about is ancestor worship. Ancestor worship is a religious practice based on the belief that uh, deceased family members continue their existence. And they, uh, the, the spirits will look down on you and try and influence things that happen to you for the good, as, as you know, well as they can. Um, there are quite a few uh, cultures that follow this, mostly in Africa. Mostly in Africa you'll find ancestor worship. Uh, there was ancestor worship also um, in Asia, some in China. We're not going to do too much with Asia, that's, that's too much out of the realm of this, but ancestor worship was there, did exist. Um, the, this, again, sort of presupposes or, or sort of verifies that uh, man that those cultures believed in an afterlife, but not reincarnation. So you know, they would like to under there's no reincarnation, but they do believe that they, they survived death. Um, then we'll go to American indigenous peoples, Native Americans, Indians. Uh, their beliefs are not monolithic. Um, there is hundreds, thousands of tribes, and they all had their own personal views, but in general, in general, very general, their theologies, uh, they had no, no concept between rewards and punishment. If you went to an afterlife, there, there were no consequences. They did believe in an afterlife, but it wasn't, the, the conditions were not based on what they did now. If you were bad or good, it made no difference, you just went into the afterlife. A lot of tribes, especially the ones around here in this area, they, they all seem to be very simple where they believe that when you die, you go on a journey. You go on a journey to the southwest and eventually, eventually, nobody knows how long, you get to where your tribe is, where your ancestors are, and you have an afterlife. The concept that we've attributed to Plains Indians of you know, going to the happy hunting grounds was based on this understanding of uh, missionaries that went out there. A, a, a lot of this stuff is, is sad. It has to go through a filter because a lot of this stuff is interpreted by people who have a Christian mindset and they're trying to explain this through a Christian mindset. Don't always get it right. I mean, one of my, one of my favorite stories about filters was uh, right at the end of the 1800s when we were in the Spanish-American War. Uh, we beat the Spanish, and as and one of our rewards, we got the Philippines. The Philippines became United States territory. And there was a big movement, there was a big zealous movement in the United States. A lot of your evangelical Protestants were so happy because now they had a chance they were going to go over to the Philippines and make all these people Christians. Well, the Spanish, who are Catholics, had been in the Philippines for 400 years. So these people were already Christianized. <laughs> so some of these interpretations. Uh, um, so getting back to the Native Americans, they did believe in an afterlife. They also believed that the souls of the dead could communicate with the living through dreams. A lot of um, societies that had men's groups, that was like part of your... Um, 
part of your initiation was, was, was to go out and, and, and try and have dreams and see what your future was supposed to be. And you would be visited by, by souls. Um, in some tribes, dead people didn't stay in human form. They became, a lot of, a lot of American tribes believed that there was life in everything. There was life in the grass, the trees, the rocks, people. But some Indian tribes believed that when you died, you became some other object. Your, your, your life force would go into this object. I mean, you know, you didn't become a rock and then, you know, you get to move around. I mean, you, you, you were a life force in that rock. There was nothing personal about it. Um, they believe life after death is a continuation of this life. I, I, going to the southwest and, and, and meeting those. Um, some tribes, not all, didn't believe in reincarnation. They believed in immediate, you come back to, I mean, they, they didn't believe in an afterlife per se. They believed in reincarnation where you were immediately reincarnated back into your tribe. So what the, a lot of Indian kids were named after ancestors, and we, we, still, we still use that custom by ourselves. You know, I, my, my middle name, I was named my grandfather, and I'm sure a lot of you all were named after parents and all, so. Um, briefly, just because it was there at the time, uh, Aztecs and Incas, they were, they were big influences in that area of the world, not really over in Europe and in the Middle East, where we're, we're going to get into. but. Um, Aztecs believe, I, I'm sure a lot of you know, Aztecs were, were the people that they had a fetish for human sacrifice. I mean, they were, every day, man, they were, they were sacrificing people and all. They didn't believe, they, they believed in an afterlife, but not in one based on what you did in this life. They were concerned with how you died. There was an honorable way to die and a dishonorable way to die. And it's sort of a, yeah, a way to die. If you were... If you were a warrior and you died in battle, or if you were a captive warrior and you died as part of human sacrifice, you got to go to the best heaven. They had like multi multi heavens, each ruled by a god, and you would just go there and you would work at the behalf of the god that lived there. Um, if you lived a long life, if you lived a long life and you know you were a good guy and you died. You wouldn't go to a very good heaven because you didn't, you know, there was nothing really honorable about this. So you kind of went to a, <coughs> a twilight place, and that was it for eternity. Oddly enough, strangely enough, a tiny notch below has heaven for warriors. So it's like kind of not the top, but like one A was reserved for women who died in childbirth. That was supposed to be like the supreme sacrifice, just like a warrior dying in battle. So, so you went to one of the best heavens if you, if you died in childbirth. <laughs> uh, the, the Incas, the Incas, we don't have a lot because the Spanish destroyed all their records. Yeah, there isn't a lot there. And, what they tried to find out from the Incas came from, and again, this is like playing the game of telephone. It's like trying to get from the neighboring peoples that lived around there what they saw the Incas doing. And the Incas, the Incas were also syncretists, which means that they would go into an area, they would take over an area, and then they would bring in items of your culture, your religion, and then mix it with theirs. The Romans did that. The Romans did that big time. So. The Incas, the Incas believed in a heaven and hell after death, but we don't have a lot of information. You know, I, I, I was looking at sources where some scientists were saying that they, they believed in a heaven and hell, but then they also believed in reincarnation. And, it was, and there, there wasn't any evidence to really, to really um, back that up. Uh, I want to get another category out of the way, and that's pagan religions. Pagan religions. Number one is the modern, sort of the modern 
uh, religion of Wicca, witchcraft. Um, Wiccans, Wiccans believe in reincarnation, eventual reincarnation. When you die, you go to a place called Summerland. Summerland is an idyllic place, you know, where the sun always shines and it's warm and, you know, life is easy and all this. And you, you stay there learning what you have to learn about your, your previous life, what happened there, and then eventually you go back. You go back again and then it's, you know, like the Hindu concept. You keep going back, going back until you reach the highest level and then you just meld into the universal life force and, and that's it. Um, the Celtic pagans, these are the people that, you know, the, the Druids were their uh, priests, uh, and the, the, the Celtics are, are, are split up into three different parts. You had the Irish Celts, you had the British Celts, and then you had the Gauls, the Gaulish Celts that were on the mainland of Europe. They, they had variable beliefs, but they were, they were polytheistic, they believed in a lot of gods, um, and their, their underworld, or their other world it was called, it was a place where the gods and your ancestors all lived together. Uh, it, was, it was a place of, quote, eternal health, beauty, and abundance. Um, then there was the Norse religion. The Norse religion had a, 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 a big influence on Europe later on. Uh, the Norse believed that there were, there were nine different levels of heaven. And depending on what you did and what you, uh, the things, your, your social class and, and what you did, that would determine where you would go. And each of these nine places were ruled over by a god. And they, they had their own cosmology and it's a little bit, you know, strange, hard to, hard to get into. There's not a lot of evidence for that. So these are like, I got rid of all the ones that I wanted to get rid of background. Uh, let's, let's go into now some of the religions that had an influence on the Abrahamic religions. Does anybody remember who the Abrahamic religions are? Or why they're called Abrahamic? Oh, the Christian and Muslim. There's Christianity, Islam, and Jews. These all had Abraham as their father. They all descended from Abraham, so they're called the Abrahamic religions. They, they have their own tradition, which is, which is kind of in, in conflict with this whole reincarnation thing. Um, but before we go there, probably the oldest recorded belief system that we have today is ancient Egypt. Um, you had a soul. The soul had three parts. You had what was called a ka, ba, and an ak. I didn't make this up. <laughs> uh, your, your, your ka was your body double, your ba was your personality, and your ak was the overall soul. I mean, if, if you know anything about embalming that the pharaohs went through, they would take out organs and embalm them separately and keep them separate because the Egyptians believed that all these different organs had a specific task that they had to do before you could properly get into the afterlife. So, I mean, you know, I don't know. Um, they had very elaborate rituals for entering the afterlife. Uh, I'm sure you've all, have, you know, seen like the National Geographic stuff with all this stuff with all the, the, the whole process of embalming and, uh, you know, all the, Funerary things and uh, 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 masks that they made. <clears throat> that was supposed to represent the person when they go over. What happened <coughs> in the <coughs> Egyptian religion, and if you made it to the afterlife, and you made it through all the tests that you had to go into, you were able to join the sun every day. Sun every day would rise in the east, travel across the sky, set in the west, and it's just what it was an endless cycle. And you got to be part of that. 
that was your reward for the afterlife. Um, this was this, this was called going to the fields of Yalu. Uh, if you didn't do that, they weren't too clear what happened. I guess nobody cared. It's, Throw your soul on the side there. That was it. Um, then we're going to move to the to the Greco-Roman culture, and I, I put these two together, and a lot of people put them together because the Romans were, were copycats. They were syncretists. Whoever they took over, they borrowed from whatever. I mean, it, it gets confusing later on in the time of the emperors and when Jesus was around, where the Romans. You know, had had so many different gods and goddesses that he pulled from all these other cultures that it was hard keeping it all together. Anyway, and a, a, lot, a lot of Roman philosophers, especially, got really cynical about all this stuff and all their writings. You know, they, you know, the, the emperor was a god and, and all this stuff. So, um, let's see, you got the Romans. Okay, well, the, the Greeks, you know, probably laid the groundwork for what we know mostly about hell. In our belief in hell. Um, upon death, the Greeks believed was that your body was brought to Hades for judgment. Now, Hades, you know, somehow turned into our modern hell like a real bad place. But back then, it wasn't. It was just a place where the dead went to be judged. This is, I mean, if you're aware of all of the myths and the stories, you know, this is where you, you would die. And you would make your way underground to the River Styx. That was one of the five rivers that went around Hades. And you had to have money because you had to pay Sharon, the um, keeper of the uh, raft that went across there. That's why this, that, that, that's where the custom uh, came from, where the dead would be laid out and you would put coins on their eyes or you would put coins in their mouth under their tongue. That was to be the payment to get across the river sticks. Um, also, on the other side, waiting for you was, was Cerebus, the three-headed dog of hell. So if you know you, you didn't pass judgment, he, he would tear you apart and all this wonderful stuff. Uh, so you, you made your way into Hades, you were judged, and then there were four different places that, that, that you could go. Um, the best place to go to were the Elysian Fields. I don't know if you've heard this. Uh, the uh, Elysium was, was the place to go to. It was a place in, in Hades. Uh, da, 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 da. There were, the, there were for the ones that, that lived pure lives, it consisted of green fields, valleys, and mountains. Everyone there was peaceful and contented, and the sun always shone. That was the Elysian Fields. The second place that they had was called Tartarus. Tartarus was for people that blasphemed against the gods who were simply rebellious and consciously evil. Um, there was a lot of torture there. Uh, there were some famous um, old uh, uh, entities that were there. Uh, how many people have heard of uh, Sisyphus? What about Sisyphus? What do you remember about Sisyphus? I remember the name from uh, okay. Homer. <laughs> you roll Sisyphus, you roll Sisyphus was, was the guy that he when he died, he was sentenced by the god to roll on a rock up a hill. Mm -hmm. yeah, this big, huge rock. Every day he had to roll this rock <laughs> to the top of the hill. When he got to the top, it went all the way back down. He had to do it again. So he went down there. So he's in, he's in Tartarus. Another famous Tartarus resident, I, I can't remember his name right now, this is what happens when you get old, but he was the guy that, um, he, was, he was chained in a pond, and above his head were, were, were grapes, and from here down he was, he was in water, and he was there for eternity, he couldn't move. Every time he tried to reach for the grapes, they would like just rise out of his range. He couldn't get it. He's real thirsty. He tried to dip down, and then the water would recede. So that's how, that's how he was spending eternity. If I can remember his name, I'll tell you. Well, that's that's Tartarus. Tartarus was like a, 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 you would be stretched on a rack. 
uh, or you'd be like boiled in lava. So that, that, that's tarnish. That's, that's the other place that they believe. Then there was the Asphodel Fields. And this was for um, people that really didn't do bad. They really didn't do a lot of good. It's kind of like, you know, if you, if you lay both their sins and their good deeds on a scale, it, it really wouldn't move that much. I mean, so that's, that's where you went. You know, it, it wasn't a bad place to be. Uh, and then there was the fields of punishment for people that had sinned often, but not so much as to be deserving of tiredness. So if you didn't deserve to be boiled in lava, you went to the fields of punishment. Now, one, one cool thing, and I think I was getting around, somebody asked a question about it, was you were required when you went to Hades, you were required after your judgment to drink water from the river Lethe. The water had magical properties. It would make you forget everything about your past life. <laughs> so, so this way you can't remember what you did or, or anything like that. Can I interrupt for coffee cups so we can run the dishwasher? <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else have one? Thank you. Yeah, oh, I still have the waitress. Coffee <laughs> All right, that's okay. You're special. <laughs> Now, the Romans weren't too far behind. They had very, very similar practices. So, um, certain people got reincarnated, but generally, no. This, this falls into the no reincarnation. You would go to a place after death. That's where you were. That's where you stayed. Now we get to the interesting part. Now we get to what Christians allegedly believe in and what's in the Bible, actually. Um, what, is, what is supposed to happen to Christians when we die? The pearly gates in St. Peter tells you where to go. Okay, we, 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 we've got the image of the pearly gates, we've got St. Peter. What else do we, do we have for, for imagery? Tunnel of light in Jesus' name. Tunnel of light, and then Jesus is there. Name in the book. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true there. Yep, you languish in the purgatory. in the purgatory until somebody comes up with bail. <laughs> I know none of that is biblical. I'm just saying. Well, it, it comes from somewhere. It comes from all these other cultures that gets melded into what we believe. Yeah, I mean, this. this how many rooms? Jumping around, I mean, this is like, you know, it, it, it happens so often, people don't give it enough credence. Is, again, sort of like the Philippines, in my, my own family culture, I'm, I'm a Polish extraction, and uh, the, the Poles celebrate the year 966 as the year Poland became Christianized. But if you look at history books, they'll tell you that Poland was not Christianized until the 1200s. And the reason for that was, was because in 966, the Polish king was converted to Catholicism, but Eastern Orthodox Catholicism. And that didn't count to the Roman Catholics. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't count. Plus, the way all these countries, when, when, when they become Christianized, you know, it's, it's where the king gets baptized, and then he stands up and he says, okay, from now on, we're all Christians. So you can be a slug out in the field there, and before you know it, you know, you can believe in all these pagan gods and everything, no, but from now on, you have to do all the rituals and everything else for, for being Catholic or Christian or whatever it is. So, I mean, that's how a lot of countries, a lot of people get to do that. So you can see in, in a lot of cultures, uh, especially... In, in, in South America, they're a blend of the old stuff and the new stuff. Um, Catholic Church was famous for that. Um, take Ireland. Uh, they were Celts, pagans. The, one of the chief deities that the Irish had was a goddess named Bridget. 
She was very powerful. She she was uh, concerned with fertility and a lot of a lot of the agriculture, things like this. But when the Catholics come in to Catholicize the Irish, they knew they couldn't get rid of Bridget. She was too powerful, so they made her saint. She became Saint Bridget. And the Catholics would come in, and wherever there was a sacred spot, they would put a cathedral there. So the people would put those two together. So, uh, so you, you would have things like, like that happen. But now, does Christianity, and we come from, from a Judaic um, system, do we believe in reincarnation? Coming back is something else. Or Reincarnation, being, being born again. Yeah, well, well there's some passage the spirit in, lives in the Bible that says that you die and you're like buried and there's nothing, and then when Jesus comes back, you all rise. Right. Okay. The okay. that's here now, it's not something else. It's just that. Right? I don't know. Okay. I'm going with it. Okay, let's go. It's, it's fascinating when you, when you tell it. Can, can any of well, first of all, do, do, do Christians and do the Jews believe in life after death? Jews? Don't. Christians, yes. Jews, no. Sadducees, don't. Yes. But, but there, there are hints, there are hints that they do. Um, I give you for consideration... Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. The rich man and Lazarus. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate there was a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. Um, I'm using the NIV, the international version for all my stuff. Time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. He went to heaven. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received good things, Lazarus bad things. And now he is comforted here, you're in agony. Beside all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. So there, there's a hint here that when you die, there is an afterlife. You go somewhere. Lazarus went somewhere. But Father Abraham also said that it's a chasm that cannot be breached either way. So that means once you die and you go there, you're not coming back. You're not coming back to give signs. You're not coming back in dreams. At least that's what this hints. This is the gospel. Um, Jesus hinted at an afterlife. Prepare many, rooms for you. many mansions. Many mansions. Why would I tell you that if it wasn't so? Jesus said that. That's that's in John, John 14 verse 2. And you'll be able to coach your loved ones from your room in the mansion. <laughs> <laughs> my father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? Cool. Now there there seems to be an afterlife, but it can't be that easy. Is anybody familiar with the book of Ecclesiastes? In the Bible? I've heard of it. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Allegedly, it was traditionally, it was written by Solomon as, as one of the wisdom books, but um, um, scholars don't think that it, it, they think it was written by some king some king of the Jews 
And this, it, it's interesting, it says right here, here, here's a section, Ecclesiastes 9, verses 4 through 10. Anyone who is among the living has hope. Even a live dog is better off than a dead lion. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. They have no further reward, and even their name is forgotten. Their love, their hate, and their jealousy has long since vanished. Never again will they have a part in anything that happens under the sun. Contradiction, it seems, that there is no afterlife. Under the sun? Under the sun. Yeah, under the sun there's no afterlife. Okay, no. Maybe the there's thing. afterlife with no coaching from heaven. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. So there's, there's evidence that the Jews and Christians later on picked that up because we're, we're part of their, their culture. They believed in an afterlife, even though the Essenes believed in, the, I mean, not the Essenes, the uh, Sadducees didn't, didn't believe in anything after death, just gone. Um, was there, did, did they believe in reincarnation? Coming back as a, a different, in a different body or in a different, as a different entity? Reincarnation. Is that what that is? Like, <laughs> you come, or coming yeah. back as yourself. Right, but just in spirit form versus body form. Uh, all depends on reincarnation. Right. Well, what does it mean in to me? I do. Well, money I don't. Okay. All right. And and then certain certain Eastern Eastern theologies do that. When you when you come back, you can come back as anything, not necessarily a person. Well, there's there's a hint in John again. John one verse twenty one. This is when John the Baptist was preaching. And the people were amazed at his preachings, and they come up and they, they asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So people, for some reason, thought that he was Elijah come back now. Does this, you know, prove that there was a widespread belief in reincarnation? Not really, but there, there's a hint of it there. So I guess, you know, just like today, we have all different kinds of views. They did too. Uh, you'd, have, you'd have your reincarnation or God tapping somebody else to be the next prophet. Yeah. Well, that again, how do you interpret that? I mean, you know, to, to, through that's centuries, not, not to through centuries, yeah. people have fought and died and been tortured over how that's interpreted. So he's going to start fighting and torturing people. <laughs> that was every Saturday morning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so we're, we're, we're going to we're going to accept, we're going to presuppose for our arguments that there is an afterlife. Now, what happens in that afterlife? Do you go there as you? Are you are you reunited with your family? Um, oh, like that thing with the brides and the. Okay. So, 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 what happens when you when you go to heaven? Do you stay as you? are trying to trap Jesus with all these little sneaky problems. And they asked him, they say, teacher, let's suppose there's a woman. She marries a man, he dies. And according to law, she has to marry his brother. He dies. And this happens seven times. He got seven dead guys. Now when she dies and she goes to judgment, Whose wife is she? Now, the, now the, the presupposition there is that everybody goes and you remain like you are. Yeah. But Jesus says, when the dead rise, this is 
Mark 12, verse 25, when the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. So when you go to heaven, you're not like this. You're going to be changed. And there, there's evidence for that, that, you know, some people have a hard time. Uh, who, who created our earliest existing written records of Christianity. Who was the oldest author? What came first out of all the Gospels? The Epistles of Paul. The Epistles of Paul were written at least 10 years before the Gospels were written. So Paul, Paul weighed in with a lot of stuff. Jesus died around 30, 30 AD. Um, Paul was not converted until like AD 50. We think that his first um, epistle came around then. And then the Gospels were written after that. Mark in 60, uh, Matthew and Luke roughly between 75 and 85. So you're talking just New Testament. Yes. And then John eventually around 80, 900, I bet 90 to 100. <coughs> so, if you know the story of Paul, Paul allegedly had this encounter with, with, with Jesus. And he said it in 2 Corinthians. He writes, 2 Corinthians 5, verses 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, new creation has come, the old one has gone, the new is here. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 44, he says about people who died, it is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Um, then in Galatians, he says, Galatians 3, Verses 28. There is neither, this is after, after you die and you go up for judgment. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, nor is there any male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. So you get transformed. Um, one of the things the Jews gave us, and we, we've taken with us, but it's gotten confused, is what happens on the last day? Allegedly. Allegedly on, on the last day. Everybody rises. The dead rises. But a lot of people, I, I think which is one of the reasons why Catholics traditionally have um, been against um, the cremation. Cremation. Yeah, totally. Because uh, allegedly the Catholics believe that the physical human body rises out of the grave, but it doesn't. But what happens is, is that your, your spirit body rises. Your physical body dies, rots, goes away. But your spirit body will rise up at the end. And uh, the, the Jews believe that, and Paul even confirms that belief, is that if you're alive at the time of the second coming, you've got to wait in line. The people who died that are dead first get brought up first, and then you guys get in line afterwards, and you get judged. Um, it's, it's fascinating that, you know, a, a, a lot of people overlook, but there is evidence that when you do rise, you're going to be in a different form. And we find this in, in the gospel of Jesus' resurrection. I mean, think about it. When, you, when, when Jesus died, put them in the tomb, put the rock there, put the seal on there, you know, that the Roman governor bowed to the Jews and put a seal on there. And when, when he was seen later on by his apostles, you know, put your hand on my side, put your hand, you know, to my, but it was not a physical body. It was a spiritual body. I mean, and, and, and it wasn't, it didn't look like Jesus. Because if you remember the stories in the Gospel when Mary Magdalene first got there, she went to the tomb, 
nobody there. She met a gardener and says, Sir, where have you taken him? I will go and take him away from here. And then Jesus said to her, Mary, and then, and then she recognized him. He didn't look like what he used to. The walk to Emmaus was the same way. They had two guys going from Jerusalem to Emmaus, and on the way they were met by somebody, and they were talking, and this person was telling them all about the scriptures to fulfill, about the Messiah coming, blah, blah, blah. They didn't recognize him. They didn't recognize him until he, they sat down to eat, and he broke the bread. They recognized him, so... But then, so doesn't all of them seeing the spirit of Jesus, like immediately after his death, support the stance that after you die, your spirit immediately goes to the next level, right? Rather than waiting till that day when the dead will rise, and then... Well, you know, that, that, right? that's, that's interesting because the, the gospel says that when Jesus died, he went to hell. To it's free all the souls down there. Passage. Now, now, now hell... Free. It's our hell. It's not. There's there's different words. The translations are are, are nuts. I, I believe the hell that was in the gospel said Hades. And again, that that's that's buying into what 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 people would understand about an afterlife and judgment. He went down to be judged, but he went down. He broke the chains, and everybody you know he came out and all this. But oh, the apostles' creed. Huh? Apostles yeah. Creed. Yeah. We we say that in the apostles' creed. So, you know, the, the thing is, I, I guess it, the important thing that I, I look at is that Jesus did not rise with his physical body. He rose with a spirit body. And, you know, you can, you can get into a lot of trouble with the people who believe literally. You know, you can, you, you can cherry pick all you want, but, you know, and where did the body go? <laughs> to know. Always. But I, one of the gospels says that there were two angels there. They might have taken it. They, they said to the apostles, "Who are you looking for? He's gone." Yes, sir. But what I find very interesting is that yes, he went to Pontius Pilate. Yes, he had the the uh, crown of thorns. Yep. And yes, they tore off his shirt. And what now? Yeah. And then, what's very interesting about that, they repeated it, and now there, there wasn't one, but that hung one on the right and one on the left. Right. And then, his last breath, if you will, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Right. And then, just to say, okay, well, legally, then we can just, you know, whatever, and then, boom, in the grave. Oh, no, 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 no. They decided to put him in a cave and have a big, thick rock. Mm -hmm. And what's... And the long thinking was, okay, here he is dead, lifeless, can't feel a thing. And, and here's where the challenge is. If he was to rise up from the slab, he obviously must have had enough strength to move that stone that took three or four people. Yeah, that could be. And then for him to turn around, and go, if you don't believe that I'm the son of God, touch my, touch my wrists, mm -hmm. touch my feet, and you will see where the nails went. Yep. And only I would know that. <laughs> well, that's, that's the interpretation of the gospel. I mean, the, the, reason, the reason why he was, well, he, he was put into the grave, according to scripture, is because somebody offered to put his body in the grave. Because of Jewish funerary practices, you couldn't do it during Sabbath. That was coming up pretty soon. They had to get the body temporarily into a tomb so the Sabbath could happen. Um, also, the 
uh, Sanhedrin, the, the, the Jewish leaders, were, were very much wanted to do this because they were afraid that um, Jesus' followers were going to come and steal the body. Because if they kept remembering, Jesus would say that, you know, you may destroy this temple, but on the third day I'm going to rise. And, you know, so they were afraid that somebody was going to steal the body. So that's why they, they put into that they put a seal on it. The Roman the Roman guard there put a seal on the door. Nobody's supposed to touch that seal. So Joseph Joseph Yeah, Joseph Yeah. Um, I don't want to run over. It, it's like time to quit. Anybody have any questions on any of this stuff? So should we take a poll? Who thinks? <laughs> can we change anything today? Like who thinks you die and you immediately Go to heaven, your spirit. Any, any other things? Two things you die, get buried, and wait until the second coming. Like we're all just spirits in limbo. Okay. Is there another hat? Yeah, I got it. There's more in the ground. I got, I got one last quote for you. I found a quote. You know, when I, when I was when I was researching. The American Indians stuff. I found a quote here that, that kind of resonated with me. With regard to life after death, this is an issue of little concern for most traditional Navajo Indians. They feel that they will find out when they die, and in the meantime, this is something they have no way of knowing anything about, and therefore they should not waste time thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs>